Hello. <laughs> Woo. Okay. So about a year ago, I posted a video of me in bed warping audio on my iPad in Ableton. At the time, I was in the middle of a really big job for Miss Lauren Hill, warping tracks and tracks and tracks of audio. Being able to do it with the Apple Pencil made me speed through it. And in that video, I mentioned that I would release another video shortly after talking about what else you could do with the iPad Pro and Ableton using Mac OS's sidecar feature. And I didn't. <laughs> I just, I simply didn't put it out. I even tried to make that video a few times, but each time I did, it was like me trying to work in Ableton for like over an hour and a half, <laughs> expressing my disappointment of why I didn't like it. It's not, uh, so now I got a spinning wheel. I didn't want to put that video out. I wanted to give it a fair shot. So that's why I'm here again, going deeper into the functionality of using the iPad to control Ableton Live. Spoiler alert, it's, it's still not something that I'm crazy about. It's not perfect yet, but there are some really cool uses. And with the advent of some other equipment that has recently come out, in addition to Ableton Live 11, which I'm going to be using here today, I think that there's some real promise for the future. I think it's a really good first step towards kind of like a touchscreen interface with Ableton. It's the closest thing we have at least. So a lot of people thought that I was using some secret version of Ableton Live that worked in the iPad Pro like standalone, but that's not the case. If such a thing existed, I'd get in a lot of trouble sharing a video like that when it's not announced yet. It was mentioned in the video that I was using the sidecar feature in macOS Catalina. This allows you to use your iPad as a secondary monitor for your Mac laptop or desktop. So I'm gonna show you how that works right now. So to start a sidecar session, you go to the AirPlay drop-down menu and then click the iPad that you want to broadcast to. And then it turns to this menu. So you can mirror your current display, I have two monitors hooked up right now, well, a secondary monitor hooked up to my laptop. And you can mirror either of those, or you can use it as a separate display. I'm just gonna mirror it because for me, that's the most useful. And, oh, look at that. I actually have the camera that I'm filming on right now mirroring onto my desktop. And it's, you know, a little bit of a delay. Trippy, 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 trippy. There's a little bit of a delay, but it's relatively smooth. Wah, wah, hello, wah, hello, wah. It's relatively smooth. Hmm. <laughs> I've used other VLC programs and other software to mirror my computer on my iPad before, and this is the best iteration of it, hands down. I haven't ever tried those ones that are like hardwired, but as far as like a wireless connection, this is super dope. So let's get into Ableton really quick. You can zoom on here using the, the top scroller. You can zoom this way, which is a lot more intuitive. You can go into the browser, into session mode, into arrange mode, much like you would expect to. Let's just do like a simple volume automation. So let's um, pull up the keyboard and hit the B button. So now I have actual pencil tool. And let's try to draw in some track volume automation this way. And it works. It works pretty nice. Um, yeah, I actually kind of like that. Bring in something from the browser here. My user library, I'll type it in. What is it? AC. Ooh, swipe texting works. And that's awesome. L like I said in the prior video, for warping audio, this is great because the typical way that I warp audio, I tend to just kind of like wiggle the warp markers and, and going like this and scribbling to warp audio was really, really helpful and sped up the process. Now, where I think this could also be useful is for people that like to draw in their music. So let's say I have a MIDI clip here and I want to create you know, a, a MIDI sequence here. Seven days, seven, seven days, my vocal cage. Is it ain't no way, just gonna turn my head 
was in a painful way. They tried to deny my quill. Don't confuse me as that the way. Now that I could see being really useful. But again, I don't really draw my stuff in. I like to play my stuff in. The other thing that's really cool about this is if you're doing work that involves you using key commands a lot, having the smart folio keyboard case is really useful because you can use the touch screen. You gotta use the pencil. You can use the touch screen and use the key commands really seamlessly. That's nice. The thing I was saying earlier where I think that this could be leveled up even more is if you had the Magic Keyboard. With the Magic Keyboard, you have a more robust keyboard with a trackpad and the ability to use the pencil all at once. That would be ideal. That's where I feel like the lines between laptop and iPad would really be blurred and you'd really be able to take full advantage of being able to use Ableton on the iPad. But in this current state with what I have, because I don't have a Magic Keyboard, it's a pass for me in most scenarios. So with that said, the best use I've seen with the iPad is warping audio. Stuff where it's kind of tedious, kind of like repetitive, where you're not really getting into the flow of making music. That's where I've seen the iPad be useful. And, and side note, I love using Sidecar for other things. There's a ton of operations that I want to do on my iPad but can't, and that I have to do them on the laptop. For instance, like I might have all my hard drives plugged into my laptop and I wanna spend an afternoon sorting all the files that I have on those. Well, I can take my iPad downstairs to the living room that's directly below me and do that and sit on the couch with my daughter while she watches TV and get some work done and it works out awesome. So as far as like sidecar in general, using the iPad to control my Mac, I completely co-sign it. But when it comes to like sacred processes of flow, like playing music, creating music, uh, it, it just, it gets to, uh, to be a little too clunky for me. I've tried things in the past where I'm going in here and adjusting See this? You see what's happening here? I just tried to do something and it skipped on me. Kind of like misunderstood the gestures that I was trying to do. And look, again, I want to move to the side and it, it lags a bit. That's a flow killer. And if you know anything about Studio Sensei, the motto is the flow is the focus. So anything that takes me out that breaks the fourth wall of the magic theater that is creating. It breaks flow for me, it's a flow killer. So anytime like I go to move something and it doesn't move and it kind of like stutters, I, I get reminded that this is not a physical thing that I'm, that I'm going into this program of moving things around. And when that fourth wall gets broken for me, it kind of brings me out of the dance that is creating. To put it another way, in a more practical way, it just slows me down. You know, there's one benefit I've gotten from performing, and I, it is that making music in real time feels so much better than anything else. So for me, that is like my holy grail quest to, to be able to just be in the flow creating, whether I'm making music, whether I'm writing an email, whether I'm cleaning, whatever. I wanna be in the flow. I wanna get lost in it. And when I think to do something, I want my fingers to immediately make that thing happen. I want the distance between a thought and execution to be as minimal as possible. So when I'm in here and I'm getting into it, okay, all right, boom, and I'm like, oh, this is working good. And then I, I go over here and I, I zoom out and that's working good. And then I crossfade this and then I go like that. And then all of a sudden it starts zooming when I'm actually trying to scroll to the left or right, done. Like. It just reminds me again that I do not like working this way. If the idea is to get away from my workstation to work, I will accept those inadequacies. I will accept those speed bumps because, you know, there's a ton of times where I'm working here all day and I just want to like go over to, here, I'll show you. Let me turn the lights on for a second. There we go.
You know, the ability to kind of get away from my computer desk and get away from being in my chair all day, or just being in the same spot, and come over here to my couch, chill out for a second, and still be able to kind of get some work done and have Ableton available to me here, that's dope. I mean, I can still hear everything that I need to hear through the speakers. I can still kind of like listen from a different vantage point, not necessarily in the room, but like just in a different headspace because now I'm listening from a place of not really working. I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of chilling and listening. And that, that makes you hear things differently. Now, is this really a break? No, a break is like completely getting away from work. Uh, and I recommend that. But at the same time, sometimes you just want a little shift in perspective, a little shift in your position, literally. And uh, this is really great for that. It does have its uses. But it's not perfect. But again, the greatest part about this is I can untether from my usual workstation. I can go over here to work, need my perk, bring my perk back. I can work in the living room downstairs, or I can even go over here. It's very useful. There's something to be said for being able to, you know, detach from my usual place of work, get out of this chair and work from a chill state of mind as opposed to like, I'm in work mode, right? Great things happen in that state. Great things happen in couch mode. So in those cases, I completely think that this is an awesome thing to have. But if I'm sitting here and I wanna work, it just doesn't make sense. The main crippling factor here is not that nothing works. It's just everything does work but every once in a while, it doesn't work smoothly. And when we're talking about workflow and we're talking about the creativity flow, I think that's crucial. Now, I know that other workflows exist. In fact, I spend a lot of time talking to people one-on-one -on -one through Studio Sensei, and I help tailor behaviors to increase flow with people in a variety of workflow scenarios. So for me, this is my opinion about how this works and how it doesn't. But I'm really curious if you've used this or if you want to use it because you have a particular workflow where this would really benefit you. Let me know. I would love to hear how you use this or how you'd like to use this to make your workflow better. Thanks again for joining me, sticking with me. This is a new channel. Uh, some of you from my old channel, the Da Vinci channel, I'll still be posting things there, but it's mostly just gonna be my music. Uh, everything else is gonna be posted here at the Studio Sensei YouTube channel, behind the scenes, everything having to do with flow, both in your creative process and life. And of course, like, subscribe, hit the bell, all those things. But more so than anything, keep loving the practice. In fact, keep practicing loving the practice. Peace. Really quick, if you're interested in a much more technical breakdown of each feature of Sidecar, I made a tutorial that you can check out here.